All right, today we're gonna to make a really easy Portuguese dessert called cavacas. This is something I had as a kid. I never even knew what they were called as a kid, but they were at my family's house whenever I'd go there, and they're really delicious and super simple to make. So a little, a little history about the cavacas. They come from a little town called Caldas de Gena, and they started because there were two sisters that worked for King Carlos, and when King Carlos got assassinated, they moved to Caldas de Gena and started a little pastry shop and develop these pastries. It's a very popular dessert throughout Portugal. Calde Chagena is above Lisbon, and it actually translates to spas of the queen. There's what they call a thermal hospital there, where people used to go to to just soak in these thermal baths to recover and get some respite care. Cavacas are made in little muffin tins. They're basically a Portuguese popover. There's also a version of cavacas called Beijinhos de Caldas, which means little kisses from the spa. And these are basically the same dough, but just are little ball shapes that are glazed. So let's get started on this simple dessert. A couple things to keep in mind. This dessert, you know, there's no yeast or baking soda. So basically what's making it puff up is steam. The moisture that's in the dough from the milk, the water in the milk, and from the water in the eggs is actually creating steam and puffing up the dough. In order to have the best chance of creating steam, you want to start with the hot oven, so you want to preheat your oven. Preferably, you also want to start off with ingredients that are at room temperature, because then it takes less time to get to the steam temperature of 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So, you know, if it's right out of the refrigerator, your ingredients are going to be about 40 degrees, room temperature 70, so you get a good head start on getting to that steam stage where you'll get a nice puff. I'm making a half a back, so I am going to put in a half a cup of oil. You want to use a vegetable oil, anything from corn oil to canola oil. And now I'll add the eggs, four eggs for a half a batch. For the half batch, I'm going to use a quarter cup of milk, one cup of flour, and a half a teaspoon of salt. Now your oven should be preheated because this will go really quick. I'm gonna turn this on about medium speed for about five minutes. Okay, our batter is done. The muffin tin is in the oven preheating with the oven so it's nice and hot. You don't have to put oil in the pan because this already has oil in the batter so it's fairly non-stick. It should pull off of the, of the muffin tin fairly easily. And they, they do puff up kind of high so you do just want to fill them up about halfway. And we'll go right in the oven. Now you want to put your kabakush in a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes. Then I like to lower the oven to 325. I lower the oven so it will not get as dark. You do want to thoroughly cook your kabakush or else the interior will be kind of gummy. When you lower the oven to 325 degrees, you could cook it for an additional 20 minutes up to about an additional 30 minutes, depending on how crunchy you like your kabakush. Now we're going to make our glaze. You want to first zest your lemon. I'm using a half a lemon because I'm making a half a batch. For my half batch, I need one cup of powdered sugar. My half a lemon zest. About one tablespoon of milk. And now you just want to stir this up until it makes a, a paste. This is basically what they call a royal icing. And you can see how it comes together. It's fairly thick and you want it to be slightly pourable. Seems a little thick now, so sometimes you do have to just adjust. You see how that's really stuck on the spoon? So I want it to be a little more pourable than that. So I'll add about probably half a teaspoon at a time until it has the consistency I'm looking for. That's closer. And I just have maybe like another quarter teaspoon in there. And that looks pretty good that consistency there. It's probably the consistency of something like ketchup or mustard. And you do want your kavakish to be 
at room temperature before you put this on because if they're really warm it's just going to want to like pour off because of the heat so you do want them being at room temperature so the glaze just could sit out my kavakas have about another 10 minutes and then i'm probably gonna let them cool off for at least 15 before glazing them Don't these look beautiful? We're ready to glaze. There's a few ways to go about this. You could get a spoon and drizzle it over each kabaka, or some people will dip them in there, glaze them and let the excess glaze drip off. So this was a really simple one. It only took a few minutes to put it together. Make them fresh for your family. Thanks for joining me. Now go cook for someone you love.